I, it's now been 10 days since the massacre in Oslo and Utøya here in Norway and it's been traumatic not only for those directly involved but really for the whole country. Um, Norway is a fairly small country population wise and uh, most of the things that happen here happens on a small scale so uh, we don't know, really know how to relate to uh, stuff on this magnitude. Today I spent uh, an hour in the center of Oslo looking at the damage and at the uh, vast amount of flowers that people have put everywhere around the place where the bomb went off. It was an eerie um, sensation. People were even now talking very softly, or quietly, and very often about the thing that had happened. I could hear a mother saying to her daughter, uh, yes, this was a very, very mean man. She's right, but I'm thinking, how difficult is it to explain to a child what has happened when you can hardly wrap your head around it yourself? Still, in, it is kind of important to understand what has happened, uh, and by understand, I don't mean condone or tolerate or anything like that, I mean simply point try to point out where things went wrong in the head of the murderer. I'm not going to dignify him with a name. Now after the bomb went off there was a lot of speculation about uh, there being Islamists behind this atrocity. But as it turned out uh, it was a Norwegian. And at CNN he was described as a um, Christian fundamentalist right-wing extremist which is kind of correct but it doesn't really describe him. Uh, first off when you think about right-wing you think um, Nazi racist. Now, he himself describes Nazism as a hateful ideology. He also says that it's pro-Israel and uh, uh, anti-racism. Um, weird, but he, he actually does say, support Japan and Indian Hinduists and, and stuff like that. So yeah, why not? Um, so that's, that's not the motivation factor here. Now, he is Islam, uh, Islamophobic, uh, that's pretty certain. And it is fairly close to the heart of the issue here. Uh, it's definitely a motivation factor. But the thing is, the people that were being killed were in the Norwegian government and use in the um, Labour Party. He did not go after Muslims in particular and you may very well ask why. Now the thing with people who are anti-Islam is that they also tend to be very uh, anti-multiculturalism and tend to obsess quite a bit about that. However, this guy went a good deal further. Uh, he he um, identified multiculturalism as the main enemy, and Islam as kind of a second, and he uh, still were not quite there because, uh, I mean, you can be against multiculturalism 
person's uh, political standpoint and say this is bad and we shouldn't do it and argue for it. But of course this is not what he did. He was using violence instead of talking. And, and the reason why is that he had a conspiracy theory. Uh, so he thought that okay, the reason why people haven't accepted his argument or, or whatever it was that uh, there was a vast conspiracy uh, led by the Labour Party uh, to keep multiculturalism going and the reason why was that they wanted to destroy European values and European culture. So yeah, it's, it's a conspiracy theory and uh, it's not one I've heard about before. I'm not sure it's unique, but uh, when you combine this with a guy with fairly little empathy, maybe none at all, and probably a good deal of sadism in him also, then you get this explosive mix. At least this is how I would describe the situation.